Hi, it's Still Standing Up with Craig Shoemaker, special guest. And I mean special. special. How many special guests pull up, open their car window and say, you look amazing. The opposite of our other guest, the la our first guest said, you look terrible. So I'm I, happy to have him here. Plus, he's a great lover. Yes. I'm not saying that from personal experience. He well, told me on. that in his credits. Come on. Come on, Craig. <laughs> we've known each other for a long time. Yeah. We've golfed a lot together. We've been out in the bush a lot together. In the bush? Yeah, looking for golf balls. In the bush. Looking for golf balls. Yeah. So, you know. I had this whole. What happens on the golf course stays in the golf course. This whole course, visual right? of us in, in, in <laughs> Africa searching, looking for the bushman of the Kalahari or something. By the way, do you remember that movie that was so, The Gods Must Be Crazy? Came I out love of the 80s. That. I was well, just thinking was one about of the, that movie the other too. day. It was one of the greatest I movies like it. ever because especially when it came out, it was so original. Yeah. Where they and it's it's so appropriate now. They dropped a coke bottle outside of a, outside of an airplane, airplane right? And, and it lands the in, in the yeah. Bushman area, right? And they found it. And these are people that don't have possessions in life. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking of it, this off the cuff is, what a wonderful way to live because we are obsessed with our possessions and our yes. things, and we seek, and we covet. And they had none of that until this Coke bottle showed up, yeah. an empty Coke bottle. And they ended up bonking each other on the head and fighting over it. <laughs> then he tried to throw it over the cliff and get rid of it to give it to the gods. Right. And it really goes to show you that's Hollywood is we covet and seek things and outside of ourselves when it's really our insides Absolutely. that we need to repair. And that's exactly where I'm at in my life right now. And that's why you're on our show. Segue. It, that's why you're on our show. This is this evolves just as a as a Coke bottle and you being a great lover. It all evolves into <laughs> it's called Still Standing Up with Craig Shoemaker, and it is about the turnaround in life. Yes. And I had you on here specifically as one of our first guests because I know you've had a lot of turnarounds. Yeah. Enough with the credits. Yeah, you're on Due South and you're in quar the Quarantine Bunch and NCIS and all that kind of stuff. CSI, DUI, you've been on that as well. No, you know what? No. I'm, in, in, in my 40 years of drinking and drugging, I have not copped a DUI. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll add that. To, well, that, that'll or, never be added to the credits no, now that you're sober. No, or, or arrested. I'm very fortunate. Wow. Very, very fortunate. Jeez, I don't have that fortune. Really? I got arrested a few times. Did yeah. You? Yeah. I, I got quite a story myself, but you're here. We're here for your story. Okay, you'll come which, on my podcast. Okay, you tell me your story. That would be great. Okay. I, you've been threatening to have me on for quite some time. The only <laughs> I thing don't I have a podcast. Oh, you don't? <laughs> I did. I That's had two. shocking to me. Yes, I thought you I did. I had two podcasts. You had, yeah. you had one with like an ex girlfriend or something, uh, right? My ex wife. It was called X's and O's. Yes, and whatever yeah. happened to that? Uh, it's a very clever idea. But I sometimes thought it was great, and it yeah. had a great hook because that's what you need in a podcast. You need a good hook. Right? You need just a good like, hook, just like a good song. And you need, and, yeah, and exactly. I thought it was a really good hook, and uh, some things happened. Didn't have a good melody. <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> a good it, hook, no melody. It was, it was, no, so what happened to the melody. show? It was, it was a great show. We had twelve shows in the can, and then just something happened um, off off camera. Okay, um, uh, you know something in your personal life that. Uh, made me not want to do the show. Some some things were said, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that just wasn't. Well, there's there's a lot in your life. Into it. There's a lot in your life. I feel like it. there is that. I don't want to get into it because there's a lot of adversity in your life, but it involves other people. You don't want to involve those other people on a public way, but you're in a public eye. So I'm yeah. sure that's a difficulty for you sometimes. It, it is, is because I want to be as open and honest as, right. as I can, because that's that's how I live my life now rigorous honesty. So, you know, I want to answer every single question that you or whatever interviewer has, but I got to be careful because I don't want to feed the machine. They want, you know, I don't want to give them fodder to yeah. write stuff about me, you know. Do you and, like that and, engine that's going and, on in yeah, the background? Yeah, I like it. I wonder, so, it sounds like a dirty By the way, it's a dirty this bike. is perfect. It's another segue is the diversity <laughs> we have to deal with. This guy, it, it's almost like he's doing it intentionally. He's revving that stupid engine of his in his mini bike. Remember mini bikes? Did you have a mini I bike when you were a kid? I almost killed myself on a dirt bike. It's right oh, there. It was a dirt it's bike. It's right there. Oh, okay. Punctured but, his left lung on a dirt bike accident. <laughs> he's reading off of the, of our show notes yeah. here. Yeah. You're not supposed to look at the show notes. Rigorous, a lot of by the way, honesty. There are show notes right here. Well, rigorous <laughs> honesty. Rigorous honesty is the show notes actually have ink through them of what we can't say. <laughs> Once one he spot. got here, no, 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 we're one, not talking about that. One spot, just just, one. just in the one spot. That's just a lot of ink that's uh, that's on there. Right, hopefully, Mister Blow Mo and Go is gone here. But uh, <laughs> so you 
had a dirt bike. Not didn't you start on a mini bike when you were a kid? That's what we all had. Was it was called a mini bike? And yeah, no, I grew up in the United I, States, I, unlike you in Canada. We had mini bikes. They were called yeah. Rups. R U P P. Did you have a? Rup? I remember Rups. Yeah. Yes. I wanted a Rup so bad. Oh, but, but the rich people had them. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up poor, so I didn't. Yeah. Have, same I here. Didn't, I didn't. We didn't have the money for it. Um, some guys in the neighborhood were making them out of old Briggs and Stratton lawnmower. Yes. Bikes. Yeah. Yes, um, I tried I, that as well. I, I couldn't could, un- yeah. couldn't understand how you can turn the engine so the gas doesn't fall out. Yeah, I, I couldn't <laughs> figure that out. But yeah, I I didn't. My first dirt bike was that time when I I punctured my left lung. Um, how did you puncture? Um, well, I didn't puncture it. I collapsed it. Okay. Um, I whiskey throttled. I don't know if you know what a whiskey throttle is. You can explain it to us for those that don't know. Okay. I'd say for those that don't know, I'm one of them. I don't know what a whiskey throttle is. I can assume. It doesn't involve whiskey. No, it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't. But um, okay, so I my first license was a motorcycle license. So I've been I've been riding motorcycles since I was sixteen. So wow. that's what forty one years. I'm very well versed in motorcycles, and I race motorcycles, road racing. I got my Wira race license, and in the off season, you know, they dirt bike to to keep in shape, right? So yeah. I thought, okay, well, it's the off season. I'm going to get a dirt bike. So I got a Kawasaki KZ450, which was too much of a too much bike for me because I've never dirt biked before. Mm. Load up, go up to the trails, and we're going along the trails. I hit a bump and a whiskey throttle. And dirt bike throttles are really sensitive, right? They're really? really easy. Yeah. So a whiskey throttle is when full. I get push backwards on my bike while you're holding on to this, which becomes an accidental whiskey yeah, throttle. Yeah. So you're like got the throttle fully cracked and yeah. you're just like the, the torque and the force is pushing you back you can't yeah. get over on top and shut the throttle off sure. so i ran into the back of my buddy i went up and over the handlebars over him and i landed on my right side so hard i collapsed my left lung mm. and i had a big rock in my side here today to this day does it affect you there's a lump here a lump yeah of scar tissue that i eventually want to get removed I'm not going to feel it. If, I, I, no. We're just going to assume no. there's a lump there. There is a lump. There. Let's all work with but that if, assumption. Yeah. If if I would like, you know, I wear my bathing suit with no shirt. You can see there's like a, yeah. a beautiful. That still wouldn't make me want to feel your lump. I do not want to feel physique. your lump. You'll see like an Adonis, <laughs> so, but then this bump. So you're an Adonis, six pack, and a great lover. Ripped. Yeah. I last. I have to hours. tell everybody else. I, I sit down and oh, by the way, I'm proud of. Not proud of. I was the shortest kid in my high school. I was five foot one in high school. So I'm like kind of happy with my little six foot two body now. You know, he sits down. It was, it was, it was like the scene from Jaws where they're comparing scars. And he goes, he goes, and he knew where it was going to. He goes, how tall are you? I go, six two. And he goes, I'm six three. And I go, oh, okay. Uh, you don't seem like you seem like you're my height. And then I look down, I go, hey, you got some big feet. What size? 14. I go, oh. Just a little thirteen, so there you go. That's that's where it is right now. You look so much better, and so I'm the love share. master, but he's the greatest lover. Because you've apparently. got a longer torso than I. See, I'm shorter. I'm all legs. Look at that. You're yeah, right. See, I yeah, actually I've look got like a shorter a, you look torso like the point you. guard, and right? I'm like Yao Ming. Yeah, but if I stood up, <laughs> you stood up, like my crotch would come to. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you were a child. I want to talk about this show is a lot about the turnaround in life. So we're going to start with your childhood. Mm. And that really is where we are formed as people, mm. you know, how we deal with life and the things that come at us. Like, what do we do with those things that come at us? Now, one of the things that came that we have in common is, is like grow, growing up poor. Did you have both parents? Uh, I had both parents, but my dad was an alcoholic. Uh, as well, so he was never around. He'd he'd show up for a day or two, a month. Where do you think he went, or do you know where he went when he wasn't there? I, as I got older, I knew the bars that he would go to because when I started working with him, he was a he was a carpenter, so I would work with him in the summer. So I would end up going to those bars with him, you know, at lunch and then dinner and then, you know, in the evening. So I knew the bars he'd go to, but. Outside of that, I didn't know where he went. Like, where where was he sleeping once he dropped me off? Yeah, like, I yeah. No, I have no idea. To was he sleeping day, at the bar? To this day, you to don't the, know. To this day, I don't know where he's. Is been. he alive? No, he passed. Uh, oh, going on uh, almost twenty years ago. And so you can't ask him. You never did. No, that's no, interesting. No. 
What was really amazing, though, and talking about turning around is, you know, I had a lot of resentments and, and anger towards my dad, but he yeah. got uh, stage four lung cancer, mm-hmm. and I got to spend the last two weeks. From smoking? Like, from smoking, yeah. And a lot of smoking, a lot of yeah. drinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in World War II. Oh, and, geez. You know, big wow. drinker and smoker since he was like a Canadian lot. forces. Yeah, Canadian forces. And, uh, you know, so I got to spend the last two weeks of his life with him was amazing because all that resentment and, and anger and hatred just went away Isn't and we didn't amazing? have we didn't have that shoulda woulda coulda talk yeah we were just two guys just hanging out it's yeah. funny you should say that not funny but I, I i deal with people to this day really close to me that do the shutout thing the silent treatment i don't know if that was part of your culture that was my mom yeah, I, I, I hate it oh, i do it not me. i it nuts. drives me it's very passive aggressive it's hostile it's hostile. It it's aggressive. It's violent. In, in my in my estimation, it's violent. It's yeah. probably worse than if someone punched me. Yeah. Because well, a punch, with, you're withholding love and connection. Exactly. You're withholding and you're withholding uh, truth, honesty, authenticity. Those are all the things you're holding back. Even the authenticity and honesty about how they feel or or, or what's bothering them or whatever it is, they they won't let you in. And I had that for years with my dad. So I understand where you're coming from, but why do we have to wait till someone the last two weeks of their life? I know. You know why? <laughs> I don't know. You know, uh, well, that is something you say, I don't know. And I don't know. So I would wonder if we can have a conversation and figure that out because it really bothers me. I have yeah. people in my life that are really close that won't speak to me. Like won't literally, I will not return your call, your right. text or whatever right. it is. But they'll come to your funeral. Or grieve exactly or, you know, yeah exactly I, yeah I, I don't know I, I there's something cyclical about it because yeah you know when when somebody passes on you know we get together and we grieve and we mourn and we're like let's not this let's not let this person's death be in vain let's let's hang out together more let's see each other more and you do for you know a yeah. little bit and then right. it fades away again and yeah. and I think it's you know I don't think it's malicious I just think I do you think it's, it's malicious? I do. I think it's malicious because I, I think it's it's your choice. And if someone's telling you, like I've told these people, I said, listen, that is something that's really offensive to me. It's very hurtful to me. And I think it hurts everyone around. Also, you have kids that are following this paradigm. And I think that's hurtful. So therefore, it is malicious if you continue to do it. If my you're, offer you're is talking this, about the withholding part, the, the withholding. part. OK, I was just talking malicious. about getting, you know, getting together and the whole death thing. Yeah, but but with yeah withholding, I do think is malicious. Yeah, I, I do I, think it is malicious. It's Absolutely. a form of, of violence. It's really bothering me. I'm hap- so happy we're talking about it, so I can get this out myself. Find out some of your techniques on how you deal with it, because that's a problem to me. That a lot of people in our society have that cut off, silent treatment thing, right. where these are unresolved resentments, unresolved rage. That's really what it is. Right, right. Is they can't deal with their own, so they project it onto you. You become the enemy. They vilify. They go find other people to collude with them and enable them to keep going with that conversation. But I say, let's have the conversation yeah. of solution. Let's solution, have the, absolutely. A lot of people don't live in solution. Yeah. Right. And and that's what I'm learning now. Finally, at at, at age 57, you know, um, you, you you say there's a resentment. So what if I have a resentment? What was my expectation? Right. If somebody is shutting me out and not communicating with me and withholding love and connection, what was my expectation? What did I do? What was my part in it? So uh, when I look at it with my mom, you know, (laughs) I did something wrong, right? That's how you look at it. That's how I look at it. It's not the truth. She would withhold it. But no, I was like, if, if, if I was bad, if I got bad marks or whatever, or I said something mean, she would withhold, she would withdraw and do the silent treatment. And not tell you though, what you're doing, quote, wrong, wrong. But so I don't believe in right or wrong, but go ahead. For me, you know, I, I, and I was too young at the time to look at my part in it. It's like, okay, well, that's why I don't believe in it. You're too young to know what right from wrong is, or even that there is a right or wrong. Right, it's but this, right or wrong means it's her version of what's right or wrong, not yours. I hear what you're saying, but this is something that, you know, it's taken me a long time to figure out. And it is hindsight, right? I yeah. was too young to figure that she out. She passed away as She's well. She passed on. Yeah. She, she died sitting next to me when I was 15 years old, just like this. Wow. Yeah. She had a pulmonary embolism mm. and died instantly. So, you, so losing both parents has had a great effect on you as well. It has a great effect. It had a great effect on me. Um, had? Well, when, when my mom passed away, my world 
halted. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I had dreams of playing in the NHL. Yeah. You know, I wanted to, uh, I, I really, that was my dream. I really wanted to play in the NHL and just everything stopped. I've golfed with you. You do have a hell of a slap shot. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's a golf club that you're using, but still, and also have the same temper and temperament as a hockey player. Well, I, 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 I played golf. I played golf sober and it's I'm completely different. Wow. I can't, yeah. I can't wait to yeah. see that. And my hockey game has improved immensely being sober. Well, I want, I want to talk about more about your sobriety. Obviously that's something that you faced in your life. You faced the time where you said, I've had enough. And we're going to talk about that. Okay. We divide this thing up. I'm still getting used to it. You're on my old podcast where I get to go, hey, let's free form for 45 minutes. But I have right. people all over here and over here going, Craig, Craig, next segment, next segment. Okay. So I'm doing the best I can. It's a great way to bring <laughs> people back, though, is we're going to hear about your recovery from these situations. Okay. Because it's not only about drugs and alcohol. It really is about people, places, and things, and how you deal with things differently, and your golf game. I can't wait to hear about that, because the last thing I remember is he broke his glasses. That's how bad his temper is. <laughs> Leave it to me to bring that up. He Well, I'm going to tease that and tell you, stick with us. It's called Still Standing Up. We're going to find out how this guy is still standing up. Hell, hell knows how, and we're going to find that out when you come back to the next episode. All right? We'll see you then.